Wow! Yes, it's finally time to get my combination on. And you might have seen a little video that I did the other day where it was just this sort of super robot anime stock sequence combination thing that I did at like one in the morning just because I suddenly thought of it and thought that is something I have to make and I suddenly realised exactly how I should make that and that was a lot of fun but of course that's not providing you with any of my opinions about the whole big combiner lads that we've got at the moment that you might want to hear or maybe you don't if you don't, why are you watching this? But anyway, it's time to start off small with what was actually my first combiner limb that I got pretty much right at the beginning of the year, not very much far into January, let's put it that way, is Dragstrip. I thought that I would pick him up first because, I can't actually remember, uh, he's just cool. I, I like the Stunticons when it was all revealed. I think I liked the look of Menosaur more than I liked the look of Superior, so it was like, let's go for Stunticon straight out the gate, even though this is the only one we're going to get till, well, I don't know. I mean, Wave 2 is starting to trickle out of certain places around the world or different online shops, but I'm still sitting here cursing the sky every morning I wake up and not hearing that it's in smiles yet. Mm, wave 2 win! But anyway, drag strip. Yeah, he's, he's nice. Good, just proper solid car man. I'm not really sure what I was expecting with getting one of these limb bots for the first time, but I've got to say, he's big. He just feels tall and solid and like massive enough for a proper deluxe that costs 16 quid. Yeah, it's just like, this is a return to how things like this should be made. Just feels good, man. His plastic is good. He feels nice and dense. He's just got good height and width and dimensions to him that feel like a, a decent deluxe figure. It's really nicely poseable, but then, you know, I spoke about Firefly and Skydive, and they are as well, and it's pretty much a sort of standard suite of joints, although Dragstrip does come away with a couple more than everyone else in the first wave, because the way his hands fold in, means you can get that going on with his fists, which... I would count as a point of articulation because it just makes him look a bit more natural and you've got him stood there if you curl his fists in a bit. And then, because of the way he changes to make a foot, his feet can move up and down so you can sort of get him in a striding pose with um, his feet kind of bent. That's good, I like that. And of course everything else is just, you know, ball joints, good solid hinges and that sort of stuff. I mean, okay, yeah, you probably would have liked some wrist swivels, I mean, they could have made these hinges ball joints then you could have got some swivel in there. and. Stuff like that, but uh, I don't really care. All of these limb guys are just perfectly good enough as they are, and Dragstrip is certainly no exception to that rule. And while the, he's not really doing anything that special, engineering-wise, there was something that did make me kind of go, oh, okay, we are living in the future now. His legs convert with a good old-fashioned, like, 1985 sliding joint, but he's got knees. He's got knees. How many bots have I had in my time where... If you pull the leg out, that's all you get. You don't get a knee in there, but there is a knee in there, and that felt good. I mean, I know it's not the first time that's happened, but that just felt good to think, oh, it's using old school engineering, but bringing modern articulation into it. And that's what I think Combine Horse is pretty much all about, really, isn't it? Of course, he comes with this odd purple shiv. Um, I'm only talking about this because I don't understand the pegs on it. Why is one of them at an angle like that? It means if you go and stick it on the side of his car mode, I guess it kind of sticks out at an angle which could be like for slashing people's tyres as he drives past, but every other place that you might be able to put this just doesn't work because it's offset like that. And it just makes me think, what were they going for with that? But at least you get a couple of options with his big hand foot gun. You can stick it on his shoulder like a big shoulder thing, or you can have him hold it, but then everyone else has to just hold theirs. When I say everyone else, Alpha Bravo has to hold his, everyone else has torts for it, but I don't know, it, I kind of like the fact that he comes with a big gun and a melee weapon, whereas all the other robots just come with two sets of guns, essentially. But look, it's a big purple foot. <sighs> I need to stick this on a Menosaur, just like yesterday. Oh, and I haven't even spoken about his alt mode, which I just objectively really like because it's an F1 car. I guess Formula 1 is like the only sport that you could say I mildly follow. I do enjoy watching it. And so whenever a new F1 former comes along, 
I'm very interested in getting one of them. And I guess drag strip, well, you know, he is a modern F1 car, he's not a funny six wheel thing like they had in 86. But I did kind of wish that he was a properly accurate modern F1 car. He kind of has a few of the design touches that the very latest models of them have, but at the same time it's just like, well, he's just a kind of generic F1 car, and it's like, mm, okay, he looks modern enough. I guess I can let them off for that. Especially when Formula 1 cars look different almost every week these days. Now we come to Alpha Bravo. The guy you wanted to be Slingshot, but absolutely, like, what, 2% of people actually care that he isn't Slingshot? I like him. Everyone goes on about the fact that he, like, he's the best one. But I guess I'll get to that in a bit. I like Alpha Bravo because, well, he is a completely new guy. I think it's a really good idea to change up some of these combiner teams by chucking a new member in there that just makes the alt modes of the entire team a bit more different. It's like, why shouldn't the aerial bots have a helicopter guy? Why do they have to be all jets? And when you have, you know, a whole team that's all jets, it's a bit boring, really. How are you going to entice kids to buy the whole lot when they're essentially buying four of the same vehicle? So, throwing one different thing in there, I think, is perfectly acceptable. And if you lose your head over the fact that this guy isn't Slingshot, then you might need to checkity check your bad self. Because what this guy is, is just solidly decent new robot man. I mean, yeah, he looks really combiner limb. I mean, his chest is just a block that has some sort of different angles basically drawn onto it. I don't know, he's very square, he's very, very g one but I like a lot of the look that he's got going on here. I like the big legs he's got and, of course, the missile arms that he has. That's just the best design point on this guy, because you can just imagine that he just punches people and leaves the missiles in their chest and then walks away and then detonates them and the guy explodes and he's just walking away like a badass, not looking at the explosion. That's my head cannon characterization for this guy, I guess. He's just hardcore and yeah, he must be with a machine gun that uses shells as big as this. But when it comes to him being a figure that you can compare to at least the rest of the first wave, just doesn't really stand up that much. I much prefer the proportions of like Firefly and Skydive with the big wide shoulders and the powerful anime stance that you can have them stood in. This guy just stands there looking like a bit of a block. A bit of a, you know, brightly coloured orange and white block. He's good, yeah, but he maybe just doesn't feel as polished as the other guys maybe. I don't know, there's something about this guy that it just kind of puts me off him a little bit. Might be the proportions. Might be the fact that he's just, you know, basically made to be repainted into Vortex and Blades, or rather, I suppose he was retroactively made because they were going to make Blades, and let's say they're probably going to make Vortex. So they thought, mm, let's get another use out of that mould by chucking a new guy in the first wave, working backwards. I don't know. Interesting. I'd like to know a bit more about the design process behind this guy, but the fact he exists at all as just a brand new retcon G1 guy, I really like. We need more brand new guys in the sort of classics generation styling. I guess the main thing that I could say that I don't quite like about the idea of this guy, apart from the fact that rotor plays don't stay on his back very well, is that I'm probably going to end up with more versions of this mould that I like more than him. And it's like, well, I've had to get him first to get a superior one together, but I'm going to prefer this as Blades. I'm probably going to prefer it as Vortex as well. Maybe even blast off because the front of his alt mode is very pointy and overall it does look a bit like a space shuttle without any wings so I would not be surprised if they remold him into that as well. But it's like, ah, oh, he's not quite right really for any of those remolds. So it's like, if this was the guy that was made just to justify the cost of some of those later bots, then, ah, oh, I don't know, it just doesn't really quite feel right. I mean, as Blades, this is pretty much all wrong for a robot mode. The front of the helicopter shouldn't be his feet, it should be on his back. The back of the helicopter should make his feet, it should, it's all upside down the long way round and yeah, the whole missile fist is cool, but Blades is a rescue helicopter. He shouldn't have missile fists. I guess time will tell where Alpha Bravo probably stands in amongst the entirety of Combiner Wars, but for now he's just the cool new helicopter guy and uh, I'm down with that. Last and well, very much least of my current combiner guys. It's Power Glide. I kind of felt obligated to pick this guy up, I've got to be honest. 
every moment sort of going, oh, he's really good, and yeah, he does look really quite nice, and I went and picked him up, and to be honest, he's not doing a lot for me. I have to say, right straight out the gate, that the only thing I really like about his robot mode is the big shiny symbol on his chest that you can see glinting there. That's the best thing. Just that one visual sort of eye-catching touch, because there's just nothing else going on here that really does anything for me. Power Glide as a robot has never really been one that excites me on a visual level. He's just an odd dumpy red plain guy with a sort of barrel chest and baggy trousers. I have to say this is a very good representation of that design. He looks like really properly 1985, but uh, I don't know, it's just not doing enough of the sort of cool, new, modern, slightly angular, make him look a bit more comic book thing that most of the other combiner guys are going for, and he just feels like you've taken the old G1 toy, made it a bit bigger, giving it a few more joints, and that's that. But for a little Legends guy like this, he is packing in the value for money, because of course he has a third mode, which is a gun, which is a bit rubbish. Um, but he's got really nice joints as well, and yeah, he, certainly worth your 10 quid with this guy. But uh, I don't know, man. I think it might be the fact that he's a little bit limited when it comes to posing compared to some of the other guys. The elbows are what annoy me, because it's like, if those were ball joints, then you could get a swivel going on. But no, his arms have to be just like that, a bit awkward. And at least for me, actually transforming this guy, he's pretty manually intensive, let's put it that way. Turning his head round is really difficult. It's really hard to get your fingers around it and it moves stiffly. And then hardly any of him have to tabs together properly. So you're just left with an A10 that pretty much explodes in your grip. But if you can get it to stick together, it's a pretty nice little jet. Yeah, I, I guess we need more little jet guys like this. But I don't know, Power Glide's just like, yeah, he's okay. I'm pretty ambivalent to this guy. So now it's finally time to do this. Ladies and gentlemen, Yes, yes, you all. It's a big old combiner, lad. Oh, blimey. Where do I even begin? Superion, like this, well, I mean, you know, with Dragstrip as a standing arm, is pretty immensely good. He just feels properly solid. That's the very first thing that you can sort of pick up when handling one of these, because it's like previous big old combiners, like Bruticus, who was pretty much the only one, was a bit flimsy, really, wasn't he? This guy is solid as a rock. I mean, listen to some of that click and well you know it's pretty stiff when it's just on like silver bolt himself i have to say once you add in the weight of limbs attached to some of these clicking joints there is a bit of give you know it is still a little bit wobbly and that's not quite as great but he does have all that sort of solidity that you really need. I think the best thing about the way that they've put all this together though is the articulation of it. He's a combiner that's like, what, a foot tall, but he's fully articulated. You know, arms go out and up and down and bend at the elbow. And then because all of these guys have waists, you've got a bicep swivel as well, and the wrists turn, and the hands kind of open up. You've got like articulated, like what? palms and thumbs it's really good so you could have him like not just hold guns in the very convenient place for like ports but you can have him like hold small guys as well like he's picking up and going to lob them somewhere although i guess you could say he could do with a couple more joints especially down by his feet here just a tilting ankle probably would have made this perfect because he put his legs apart and just one click is quite far apart and he will just kind of Display until like the next click point, and yeah, it's a good bit of give in the legs outward here. So, getting him to stand up properly is a little bit difficult, but it, it's, it's possible because you've got the sort of thumbs and hands on his heels here, which are all adjustable, so you can do stuff there, I suppose. But basically, I like Superion because, well, he just feels nicely proportioned, he's got all this detail, and 
Yeah, that's that's just nice. The only thing I think I wish he could do is look up, because the only thing I remember Superior never doing is catching a nuke in the Dreamwave comics, like flying along and doing that, but he can't really fly along because he can't see where he's going. Oh, but don't forget about Power Glide. He's an aerobot now, don't you know? So, Superion at least, gets a good, you know, 9.5 out of 10. Maybe he'll feel even better once he hasn't got a car on here and I have Air Raid stick on there, but I've got to say, it feels like I've gotten really used to having this guy as a surrogate limb, and I think pretty much everyone has, so it's going to be a bit of an odd thing when Wave 2 properly arrives and everyone kind of just takes track strip off and separates them and he goes on Menasaur and then he can finally get Air Raid on here and Dragstrip is just there kind of feeling like oh but we had something once we were a team once what we had was special is he going to stick him on the massive diesel lout that is Motormaster? So then, what about the event I've been waiting for? Proper Ultra Prime. Yeah, this is pretty much a sight to behold, um, and I've got to say, at least one of the limbs is right for a kind of Energon Optimus in a big white helicopter, um, but uh, he's a bit of a hodgepodge really, isn't he? I can't tell whether using drag strip is kind of a good thing here or not, I don't know, because Without him, he's just Optimus wearing the aero box, and I, I don't know. I kind of like the thought that as time goes on, I'll be able to make a bit more of a interesting Ultra Prime, a bit more of a varied assortment of vehicles as limbs, but this is still pretty darn good, and it's so cool to think that, yes, Optimus is a combiner again. Here he is being all massive, looming over everyone, and just kind of, well, looking a bit odd with these massive hips. There's one thing I don't like about this, it's the legs. It's like his thighs are just so wide and far apart and you can get around that by sort of moving his legs in a click, but then you lose the fact that these flaps kind of tab in and make for a bit more solidity, so it all becomes a little bit wobbly at that stage and he already is a little bit wobbly. If there's one thing that I'm looking for in Menasaur is that these hips just work a bit better. The Motor Master's hips don't just go one click and then they go way too far out or whatever. This guy's not the most structurally sound, but damn if it is not a thing of majesty to behold. So there you go, that's my look at my first lot of combiners. It's pretty good stuff. Yeah, I've got to say, while I am itching for Wave 2, I can see that I'm going to be enjoying all of this stuff for a really long time. I think it's safe to say one of the best things about Combiner Wars, because of all that interchangeability, is that it's really easy to just be enjoying like Wave 1 stuff probably down the line in Wave 5, because you're going to want to be swapping the stuff around and seeing what looks good, and oh, it's just so much fun. If you haven't got on this bandwagon yet, and I honestly can't imagine anyone who hasn't, then definitely get on it, because it's going to some really good places and it looks like it's going to be the most satisfying line in a really long time and I'm just totally enamoured with it. So, I'll leave you with a WAVE TO WHEN and catch you next time.